All right, we've got two boxes with a ton of stuff, and they don't do fit in between the camera and the keyboard, I guess. A different kind of pep cack problem. This one contains the majority of this week's release. Should be like nine containers. I'm trying to get them all in one hand and toss the box. Yeah, like sort of like that, except maybe smoother. Oh well. Next time. This one is going to have one thing in it, I think. Okay. Let's begin with this one thing, because this is... Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? Familiar Myths, Sentai Limited Edition. Uh, if you're not familiar with this anime, it's... Um, well, I, I don't entirely know what it's about. I get the impression it's a medieval something and the other. But the important thing is she has blue straps on her boobies, which I don't see there. Which are, um, I don't know, unique or notable or they became somewhat popular. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out how to even dig through all this stuff. First of all, we've got a book here, which uh, actually says something there. Okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I can't fucking read that because, um, well, either it's upside down, which I p doubt it, or it's, a uh, runes or something. Oh, look, it's completely empty. So this is a diary of some sort. Or misprints, but, uh, the truth of the matter is I'm okay with that. Whatever, whatever it is. Okay, so this is kind of that sort of thing. So let's try and pick this up. I don't really know who all these people are. I don't even really know what this box is. This is extras. That says Showgate. I recognize her from the calendar I had. Interesting. Okay, there's a little thing there. That doesn't feel like my fingers are going to. But instead of peeling it off, let's cut it open. You know, just cut that little piece of tape. Let's see what in the world is in here. Especially since I don't know. Oh, look. There's a bunch of characters. It's interesting that these characters in the middle... Oh, I guess that guy as well weren't there, but... You can see the blue boob strap thing that I was mentioning. So if you've never seen it before, well, I guess now you have. Oh shit. Eh, it looks like it comes with a blue boob strap thing. It's just too bad that I don't really have much in the way of um, moves, I guess. So I couldn't even pretend to joke about it. Uh, hmm, I wonder if you'd also get arrested for trying to do that sort of thing. No, well, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to try to do it either way. Hmm. No, it feels like it's not wanting to go in at the bottom there. So let's uh, try... Ooh, I guess I did it. Then I can put this back in there and close the box. And then continue digging into whatever this came with. This is a limited edition booklet. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? I do like how all of these have some hard coverness. See, this is kind of your standard booklet. Looks like it had character information and drawings. This is a Blu-ray disc. Oh, is this lenticular? But that's referencing a scene that people probably found entertaining. Sentai seems to be somewhat aware, aware of that sort of stuff. This is what the two Blu-ray discs look like that come with this set. Huh. 
So it looks like a slightly cheapified form of all these characters. And here would be the DVD version, which feels heavier. Did I even look at the back of the Blu-ray version? I mean, the backs, they're not exactly the same because the episode distributions on the discs are different. I guess we want to know. This should be English dubbed. Yeah, it is. Because Sentai probably wouldn't go to all this effort to make a limited edition without dubbing it. And we've got Region A. So unfortunately, anybody wanting to import has to be able to handle that. Uh, this one has... What is this? I don't know. Maybe stickers. I'm, my curiosity makes me want to open it. Oh, and I guess... Did I get this from in here so I should put it back? It's on the back. There's nothing. Okay. But, uh, thanks for these. I expect completely different art on these because when they combine DVD and Blu-ray versions like that, they don't have shared artwork. And you got that character whoever she is on the inside and before I close this now as you can see it all comes with a blue strap so that you can do this sort of stuff to it what was on the top I think she was on the top and then maybe we have this book here and it folded like that or something like that. Hmm. Interesting. So I don't know if the anime itself is spectacular or not. Oh look, I guess it says in the back there that's region A, region 1. Gives you the audio and stuff. <coughs> the Hestia ribbon. I guess it's the blue ribbon. Static cling, so those are probably not um, stickers, but they're kind of static cling things that are pretty much grimoire journal. Hmm. Taking a peek to see if there's anything on here, like a number. It almost feels like it would have something like that, but I guess I didn't notice it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Next up we have Aria the Scarlet Ammo AA. I don't remember much about the first season. This is region A only. It's dubbed, which is consistent with, I think, the previous one, although I don't remember. Oh, that said, this, this is a Funimation release, right? Yeah, it says Funimation right there. So that's uh, pretty much to be expected, even though Funimation has released quite a bit more um, subtitled stuff lately. Ooh, on the inside, uh, it's too bad that the uh, security stick is there, I wonder. And if it's not coming off quick, I'm not going to force it. DVD 1, DVD 2, Blu-ray 1, Blu-ray 2. I am kind of curious what the um, original... Oh, we could actually just see it through there. What the original disc looked like, how this compares to that, but... I know, I'm not going to try to dig it out. So here we have Sailor Moon R, the movie. It's Sailor Moon's first theatrical feature that I did not know. Although I probably would have known if I'd probably bothered looking. All I know is eh, it got released. And I think this is a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. Yeah. So even though I have an old Blu-ray version, actually it's possible that they are redubbing this with the new dubbers as well. So maybe I would want this either way. It's for the first time in stunning high definition. That's the old school Sailor Moon um, character design. Let's see. I see region A. Well, if it's not dubbed, that would be weird because I'm pretty sure the old movie was dubbed. But I'm not going to question that too much. Let's just take a peek on the inside where we have DVD disc in which uh, apparently my soul has been trapped. And then a uh, well, where does it say Blu-ray? Well, I see Region A there. So maybe we just assume this is the Blu-ray version. On account of the fact that it should be. Oh well, 
Next up, we've got Gotcha Man 2 Complete Collection. DVD version. I think there was maybe a Blu-ray version being mentioned by whatever it's called. Or maybe there was another OVA or something. I never found listings. I, so I just got what I could definitely get. This has all 52 episodes. And I'm guessing this was not contained in the set I had before, but I could be very wrong about that. You know, I have the, that 14 disc individual release from a long time ago. Uh, I'm not going to align all these because we've got a lot of discs. So many of them upside down. And that, I don't even know what that is. I say I should watch it, but man, I'm so behind on watching that stuff. Next up, we've got Valkyrie Drive. I see this is a Funimation release. This um, um, cover slipcase. Is that what it's called? My brain's farting right now. Well, anyways, uh, Region A audio. It looks like we've got an English dub for this. The name sounds familiar, but nothing about it looks familiar. Obviously, this is very Yuri-ish Yuri anime. Let's see. I was trying to think what if it wasn't, but I see two pairs of boobs there. So I don't think we have any cross-dressers. Uh, I see. We've got two um, white discs. I can't identify. Well, I think it says DVD up there, so that should be DVD episodes 1 through 7 and stuff. Which means the reds are blue. Ray. Blue Ray episodes 1 through... I think that's a 9? I'm looking through the camera. Not directly at the thing, but the light's kind of... I guess it's a 9, yeah. Uh, or th that's 10 through 12 for that second one, so the other one was. And that's, so this one's a curiosity. I don't know what it's about. You probably know more than I have because you probably read the back when I was just stuff. Next we've got Ocean Waves Blu-ray plus DVD. Did I get a DVD version earlier? I think... I don't know. All I know is I'm pretty sure I didn't have this. I have this now. If I did, I'm opening it. Well, I guess that means I'm keeping it. Otherwise, I think I imported one. Yeah, okay, so we just have... um. When Marnie was there and Tale of Princess Kaguya, which I have both of. Ocean Waves, DVD video, and Blu-ray video. So it's nice that they continue to get these movies out. This one is a Studio Ghibli title that just didn't get released for the longest time or something like that. Uh, next up, we have uh, Undefeated Bahamut Chronicle, and there's definitely a DVD version somewhere down here, apparently at the bottom. <coughs> This is a Sentai release, so of course this thing is sealed. And this one I'm actually really curious about because I kind of like her character design. I think a part of it is, you know, they made her a pretty character and they also made it where she looks pleasant. So I don't know if that's something unique to this and if it doesn't really have any selling points. It looks like Region A is sub only. Prince vs. Princess. And I guess I'm going to set this down here because there's a very good chance that as I open up this DVD version, it's probably going to share the same, or two, these two artworks. And have a third disc design. Well, we're going to find out which, or even if that's true. So we've got this one, or the same, which is very, very common for a Sentai release. And uh, this time, it looks like. Disc 2s are common, and Disc 3 is unique to this one. Let's see, I guess before I put this all away... And I want to... That. Ah, yeah, nice big release this week. This one, Dagashikashi. Complete series. I don't think I see anything that says it's a season one, but it, you never know when it is. I mean, that 
It just looks like gibberish, but maybe... Well, anyways, I expect it to be. Uh, it looks like it's region A only. It has an English dub. And I don't know what it's about, but the character design, they're intriguing. <sighs> Something familiar about them, but I'm having trouble placing my finger on why. So let's just open it up. And take a peek on the inside. Uh, okay, so this. I see DVD episodes one through seven. And then that's probably is that a nine? No, an eight. Yeah, okay, that's that's definitely an eight. It's weird when you look, try to look at it from an angle. You got the Blu-ray, which has a standard uh, nine episodes plus extra. I guess that may be um, that thing, and then ten to extras. I'm looking at the. Oh, I, I kind of recognize those dead eyes, dead-ish eyes, or they're not exactly dead-ish, they're kind of more gangster-ish, I guess, piercing gaze, something or the other. So yeah, I guess I've seen some pictures of that, but I don't know what its content is. And last but not least, we have uh, My Hero Academia, so for this one I'm actually going to Give myself a little space. This is season one, and I think I got a limited edition version because uh, this feels a little more bulky. That was not opening anything like I thought. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It says season one. That's uh, probably means there's more seasons to come from Zero to Almighty Hero. It's definitely a fun sounding concept, but I don't know. Uh, this one's region A only. It's got English subtitles or English dubs, so. There's that. Okay, so... Okay, so... We've got a student notebook. I can feel... This feels... What is this? It feels clothy. Which is, um... Oh, I saw something in there. Oh, my... At the halfway point. It's an interesting curiosity. Uh, and I don't know what it means in this context, so... Hey, we have a limited edition art book. So I guess maybe I did get a limited edition version of this. Uh, well, uh, there's a blobby monster, and there's a lot of character design stuff. Let's see. Let's uh, look at this one first, I guess. Uh, I don't see what this one says this. Oh. It's a keychain. From a character from within the show, I'm guessing. Hmm. You know, it's kind of interesting, because I would have almost pegged this for something that Viz would get their hands on. I, I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe it's because Viz got their hands on one Punch Man. Oops. I'm going to put these back in here. And then we've got... Did I look at the back of the other one? I guess I, guess I did. Oh. This one has nothing in it, because I guess this is a DVD. No, that's Blu-ray one. What the fuck? Blu-ray 2... Blu-ray 3... The other one only had two discs in it. One... Two... Interesting, DVD... So, huh... That's a very unusual for a Funimation release. Or for anybody release, I guess. It has more Blu-ray discs than it has DVD discs. Whew. It's not a bad thing. It's a weird thing. Of course, my usual strategy of trying to preserve these things may be a little tricky. Maybe I can take this and put it in there. It 
not wanting to go in, so it's possible that the answer is no. So we'll try it like this. Oh, that's it. Student handbook is not going to go in there because there's just no space, but... Huh. Hmm. There's uh, this week's anime DVD collection update. It feels a little weird because this uh, this and Your Name are the only anime I watched this week. And of course some Steins Gate with a friend, but uh, it feels weird because I finished, I guess I finished the Zelda Breath of the Wild on Sunday and I guess it was late Sunday evening so it kind of makes sense I guess that the anime would still be slim pickings, but you know I finished that. We'll talk about that later. I was intending to have this finished today, but I was just so exhausted last night that I decided to just go to bed, I guess. I feel really exhausted right now, but I really need to finish this so that I can start one of these things that arrived today because there's a lot of goodies. But before then, content-wise of this, um, I guess it, it mediocre does feel like the word that comes to mind. Um, which is unfortunate because I, you know, I, I'm kind of, I was kind of curious about the character designs. They, something about them felt interesting, and I think they stayed interesting as I've watched most of it. And it seemed to present its first foot forward as it being, a, oh, the main character is a strong, experienced guy, even if he doesn't maybe entirely look it. He doesn't not act it, but I guess it kind of fumbled with that feeling bits, maybe? Um... Because it, it kind of felt like, it feels like the relationships between why the characters, why they're paired together some the way they are, doesn't feel entirely accurate. Some of the decisions seem to be less, oh, well, this person was the team lead because it, act, it definitely made sense, so much as the other characters wouldn't make sense, maybe? You know, there's nothing about it that's definitely horrible. It just... It feels like it's failing to engage, maybe? Um, it, there's curiosities going on throughout it, and... Yeah, I don't know. I guess it, it doesn't have a specific tonal thing it's trying to um, express, maybe? There's probably a lot of reasons I can think of that why it's just not engaging, but eh, yeah. I'm, I've got two more episodes to go. I doubt the last couple of episodes will do anything to really turn things around because even as it is, the ultimate series problem that they're presenting is something that feels convenient for the characters, maybe, as in like... <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm actually convinced that it's it should be so easy to have this conflict that they had which maybe wasn't easy but maybe that just means it feels easier than it should have been or something I don't know so that would probably be why it doesn't rate so well I don't think it'll necessarily insult anybody who watch it but it's failing to deliver something that feels like it was trying to do but then got sidetracked on, maybe. Maybe that's a good way to say it. <clears throat> Outside of that, yes, I did watch uh, Your Name. I, it's something I hadn't really been paying a whole lot of attention to. I, I definitely heard its name a whole lot, but I was just, you know... Uh, same thing with Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in the Dungeon. Everybody was talking about that last year, I think, and... If... Or maybe it was the year before, considering I had a 2016 calendar of it, so... Wow. Time's flying fast. But, I guess I didn't care to, you know, I didn't invest a whole lot just because I would wait for it to come out on Blu-ray DVD, which it did today. So now I'm kind of curious to see what everybody was interested in two years ago. I'm not expecting much of it, but, you know, that's a side. Uh, your Name, I guess I was also not necessarily expecting a whole lot from it, because a lot of people like Makoto Shinkai's stuff more than I do, I suppose. And when I when I say that, I mean, I've been a Voices of a Distant Star purist, maybe, where all, all the stuff he's made afterwards have been kind of nice. 
I can understand why people would like them. I think like with five centimeters per second, I, I kind of remember it being divided into three chunks. And I thought if it was only the first chunk, I'd probably enjoy it. Second and third, I kind of felt maybe were a little off feeling wise or something. I don't remember the details of five centimeters per second, so it's hard to comment about that in too much detail and know whether or not I'm being accurate. I just vaguely remember these feelings. I'm forgetting so much anime stuff. But you know, it's obviously that's not the only thing he's made. He's made a bunch of other things, but I think that's continued to be his top thing for a while now. With your name um, starting to upset that balance, and I think that was my observation going in it, but at the same time, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be better than Voices of a Distant Star. And I guess the problem I have right now is I'm not sure. It I might actually have enjoyed it more than Voices of a Distant Star. Maybe it's the sort of thing I'll know better if I watch it a couple of times. Because if there's one thing that Voices of a Distant Star has over your name, it's the message is more concise, I guess. And that could also just be why I've liked it in general. But at the same time, your name feels... It's great. I mean, there's a funness to it that kind of reminds me of The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. I'm not sure if I've seen... It. Well, I guess I've not seen anybody review it, but based on some of the recommended anime I've seen on, I think, Anime News Network, and I didn't see anybody really mentioning it, but they both seem to have this idea of... They come up with an idea to have fun with, and then they have fun with it. And... You know, there's plenty of movies that kind of come up with fun ideas and fumble with them, and this isn't one of those as far as I can... Well, not as far as I can tell, but rather in my opinion. I'm pretty sure somebody out there didn't like it. And I guess because of that, it hasn't had this need to break it up into kind of three stories like um, five centimeters per second did. Three, I think, conceptually really related stories, but I just don't remember what two and three were even about. Do I even remember what one is about? Jeez. And for his other stuff, I mean, he hasn't done that, but at the same time, I think they've been pretty and they've been um, neat, but they haven't had a theme that's clicked quite so well as this where. Like, Voice of a, of a Distant Star is neat because it's a, a little OVA that represents, in a very anime, sci-fi-ish way, the, a human experience that was that is not too dissimilar to, from what he and his wife are experiencing at the time. Maybe they're still experiencing that. I don't know. And maybe with Your Name, some parts of it clicked. Like... Waking up from a dream feeling like you miss, like you're forgetting something that's important, sort of missed, a kind of longing feeling sort of thing, which is omnipresent in most of his works. But I think with that one, you know, that seems to be one thread that's just kind of intermixed in there very well. And I have to say that um, I didn't see where most of it was going to be going. And when it presented some interesting concepts, it didn't distract or detract from this underlying thread it had throughout the movie. So it was fun. It was. It felt thematically appropriate. It was a good movie. I really enjoyed it. I don't know if it's the reason why I was completely exhausted last night and didn't finish the two episodes of this. Or if that's just um, work is difficult. It's um, our team's re responsible for for this um, release deployment deployment, so <sighs> we're multitasking. Um, <clears throat> or maybe it's something else entirely. I don't know. All I know is something. I don't know. I should probably move forward because the last thing is Breath of the Wild and. Uh, I finished it up. There were a couple of side things I wanted to do. There's a couple of others that maybe I could do. Like, I think I missed uh, seven um, quests. One of them is a shrine quest, and since I got all the shrines, that means somewhere, somewhere out there there's a quest that I can just start up immediately and have it be immediately resolved. 
I don't know where I missed it. But on the other hand, you know, I can just leave it where the game's in a safe state where if I load it, I can just beat the final boss again if I want to show the ending to anybody. Not that the ending's uh, as spectacular as you would hope it would be. I think part of the problem is it's they're not going to be able to make the ending what you would want it to be. With some of the older style Zelda games, they're able to tell a more controlled story and so they can kind of control the expectations, I guess, a bit more. And I remember sometimes, like I remember the final boss or bosses of Twilight Princess being annoying, like maybe the mechanics hadn't been that fleshed out or something. Um, I kind of felt similar frustrations here, but it's more like I, I didn't quite have the timing on a lot of stuff nailed down, but they really do introduce you to a lot of the concepts that you use for the final boss. So in that regard, it's, um, good. Where was I going with all this? I don't know. Ending-wise, um, I think the problem with Breath of the Wild's ending comes more from, I guess, um, because it's open world the way it is, it has a... It, it allows the user kind of build up their own what ifs, and you're kind of waiting to be wowed by it. Sort of like how the first episode of the third season of Rick and Morty wowed all of us. You know, the entire internet was speculating about what they thought would happen in it, and I didn't see anybody say anything that resembled what actually happened. And what actually happened is it feels like a very Rick and Morty thing, and at the same time, kind of blows all of our minds. So. You know, I think maybe we were hoping for something like that because I know that taking that out of account, I felt like it. I was satisfied having beaten it. There could be another part of it where maybe a lot of people weren't as super fully equipped for the ending as I was, you know, because it's open world. Technically, uh, you can go there as soon as you finish the uh, pretty much tutorial area, I guess. And... <sighs> At that point, of course, everything will kill you in one hit, and it's just a matter of how clever you are at surviving all that shit. But I think maybe... I know there's a speedrun out there that's like, uh, what, 45, 50 minutes long or something like that? And they probably didn't exactly do that. They probably did a couple of things to go get some important stuff, maybe? I, I, I don't know what they did, but I guess um, I'm kind of trailing off. Must be the exhaustion. So overall, I enjoyed playing it. I think I'm done with it. So at this point, Super Bomberman R is what's staying parked in my uh, Switch. And I play that every once in a while, and I'm getting Thanks. slightly better at that. But it's yeah, I guess the only real problem I have with it, obviously other people have a problem with the price, you know, because it's pretty much the only option for what it is, or at least it was, and outside that, I think if you could adjust the difficulty of the computer players, it would have been great, because, I mean, it wasn't just me who was getting in there and not having a good feel for the play, and so not quite enjoying the offline multiplayer stuff with my friends. You know, because you can't make it just your friends. There has to be either four players or eight players, which means that you always have computer players, and they're aggressive as fuck, and not impossible to hit because they just don't make mistakes. And the old Super Bomberman games used to have tweakable computer AIs. I think my friend and I played Super Bomberman 1 or 2, especially quite a bit. Multiplayer stuff, so... It's not bad, it's just one of those things where they could have done better. Oh, well. Anyways, I think that's everything I was going to talk about, so y'all have a nice week.